Hey, welcome back guys to the mobile game tutorial. In this episode, um, we'd like to tackle the, the main menu because this looks really bad and let's go ahead and just create some kind of scene around that, just give it some life. Okay, the first thing we'll do is get rid of that blue background, we're gonna go get a skybox off the asset store or pretty much anywhere really, if you know how to make skybox you can just go ahead. It's very simple, all you have to do is create, oops, not a new GS script, you have to create a new um, I believe it is the cube cube map now I can't find it where is it at oh a new material so you just a new material then you call it skybox and you change the shader for an actual skybox shader so either a six side uh, cube map procedural I think I'll be using cube map just to try it out and there is none in my project so never mind that I'll be using the other one so six sided and you can simply put a texture in there so um, let's have a look at what we have. We pretty much have no texture for that, so we could go ahead and just download some of the assets or, or make them ourselves. Let's actually try to make them ourselves. That's uh, that would be a good step forward. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just open up the Photoshop and uh, make something really simple, just just for fun. Um, I'm going to make a six two fifty six texture because you need you need actually you need six. Um, how am I say that? You, you need six texture to actually make a skybox. So if we take a look at this one, that's one side. Now we need one for this side. We also need one for this side that we can't really see. So I'll just put it, say, doo -doo -doo, that's the front. That's going to be the back. So that's one, two, three, four, and then one for above and one for below. Okay. So um, never mind that. Maybe a 512 actually. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So 512 skybox mat or just skybox. And I'm going to just try and make a pattern, something really simple. By the way, you must not have any alpha in your skybox. That's really important. If you have alpha, you're going to pretty much just break your visual. So you need a background color, that's for sure. And I'll be using this one. And after that, just to try out some stuff, I will just make a small pattern. Um, let's see if we have anything in shape. Oh, this one. This actually looks fine. Great. <laughs> so I'm going to be using this pattern just like so. Also, make sure it is uh, seamless. If you're going to use the same texture multiple time, then you're going to make sure it is uh, seamless. In my case, I'll be using this. Just scale it up to 512. And would that be seamless? I'm not sure. Let's actually try. We're going to go in Filter, Other, Offset, and no, it is not going to be seamless. So, what I'll do is I'll actually move these lines on a horizontal axis like so. Scale them up so I have multiple. Okay, that sounds great. I'm going to rasterize this layer. Then duplicate it, rotate, and here is my pattern. Now I'm pretty sure that this is a seamless. If we go and filter and actually try it out, other offset. Oh, okay, no, it is not yet. I have to merge these two layers together first. Then I'm going to Control A to copy everything. Then Control C, Control V to paste. This way, I only have the lines and nothing else now. Now I'm going to try once more and actually um, offset this. And as you can tell, we don't get any seam problems, so that looks fine to me. I'm going to go ahead and just save this, and that's going to be my texture for all six sides. Right, that's really cheap, but it could actually work. So let's try it out. Uh, computer, get the mobile assets, artwork, texture, and this is going to be my skybox texture. Now, uh, usually when you make a skybox like that, you name your texture in a way that you know which side this is. So that would be maybe the front, the back, and so on. But since I plan on using the same one, I'll just name it a uh, skybox texture. And... That skybox is really bright now that I look at it. Let's hit play. Yep, that's really bright. We can down the exposure a little bit, or maybe leave it on the one. 
Well, there's also a rotation factor. That's That could be really cool for some effect, actually. Just play with that, and I believe that we can get a decent result. Now, as for the brightness, I'll be leaving it on uh, what we've had before by default. So something around here. And if we hit play and just, just have a, a good feel, um, might be a little bit too bright, right? Okay. So that's how we made a skybox in a <laughs> really short time. Now, the UVs of a cube are never going to be perfect, so just make sure that we don't ever look up there because that's a little bit messed up. But in our game, uh, the way we work, we actually never get to rotate up there. Other than that, it actually looks fine to me. So here's the uh, skybox. And now let's actually create some kind of scene down here. So this is where you, you, you can pretty much put anything that you'd like. I'll just be putting, um, I'll take out my floor tiles, the 4x4, four four, why not? I'll be putting it in the center, like so. And uh, let's see, we can't actually see it. Okay, let's actually bump this up to say, scale 10 by 10 by 10. Where exactly is our camera in this? Okay, so it's around here. We have to make everything look really, really big. So maybe a hundred by hundred by hundred, and I'll just bump this down here. And now we kind of, you know, we kind of have the feel that this is a 3D scene and we're just moving around this. Now there's a lot of stuff that you can do to make this look good, and there's a lot of you could make your own custom 3D model and just make like a small room and uh, you know just be creative with that. For my part, I'll be rotating this on this side and maybe moving it here. We can snap on the vertex if we wish. So this one like that. You could actually be rotating it this way so we actually have a background. Um, but that wouldn't look too good. Okay, so I'm going to play with my scene around, try to make something that looks decent, and I will come back to you really shortly. Okay, so I came out with something like this, so something pretty much really uniform, except for that platform, which uh, just hang out like that. And uh, that's because I wanted to be able to see um, the wind box, so on a flat axis like this. As you can see, I just put the wind box right here. I know it's a little bit hard to see because of uh, we pretty much run the same texture everywhere, but it's there, and when we look at it through the menu, we can also see it in the back. So once we have our own custom texture for that uh, wind box, then it's going to be able to, uh, it's, you know, you're going to be able to see it clearly. Okay, so that looks fine to me. And on the shop, I've also moved the ball down here, so it's a little bit easier to see. And now all we have to do is just fix the currency and uh, then fix the pretty much as a masking issue and maybe add some spacing in between of these. Let's actually go ahead and just do that right now. I am going to go next to my panel. So currency over here. Let's take that currency text. So let's make it white. That's a very good, good step forward. And um, bold, bold and italic. Why not? Something of the sort. We could also make it a little bit bigger. Now, if we take a look in the game. That makes sense. Okay, I like that. So the next step is the shop item container, and this one is going to be a little bit hard to mess around with. Okay, so the currency is fine. Now let's actually work on disk and um, on the mask itself. So I've turned off the mask. I went under shop and actually removed the mask completely. Now we get this kind of result, which obviously uh, is back to what we had before at the very start, and we need to pretty much just put that inside of a single mask. Now. Um, we could be putting it on this guy, the shop item container. As you can see, it has a panel that we could use as a mask. But the only issue is that this panel is actually scrollable, so it is not going to work out. As you can tell, uh, it's, we don't even see this guy in the back. So what I'm going to do is actually remove this because we don't we don't need it anymore. So remove the image on the shop item container, and under shop, we are going to right click add a new UI, a new panel, and this is pretty much just going to be the mask. So um, I'm going to stretch this on the horizontal axis only, then reset the 
these settings, put the height on say 75, I think that's what we had. And we can actually just scale it down using the scale tool. Move it, um, move it like that, but we know that a button is 75 in height, so we gotta keep it that way as well. Or we could actually bump this up to 80. Or you know what, instead of bumping this up, we're gonna reduce the size of the button. So, okay. We basically have this panel now. What we have to do is take the shop item container, drag and drop it inside of the panel. Now the panel, it needs a mask component. If we hit play on this, let's actually look at the result. And that is what we get. So that's a little bit better. Now I believe that the buttons are not being rendered completely. If we just take one. Yeah, as you can tell, the anchor is a little bit... Uh, off so it has to be like this instead and I think we can fix that by resetting the left and the right and also the uh, position Y so now we should be good to go and that's actually working out just fine okay great so that's a good start um, let's rename our panel for mask and now the shop item container, it has a horizontal layout group. I'll just give it a small spacing, so maybe a spacing of either 5 or 10, depending on what we can look at in a game. So is that spacing too big? Um, what if we put 10? That's way too big. What if we put 2? I believe that 2 is a little bit uh, not enough so I'll just be putting five so that's what I'll be using on my end of course you can do your own art uh, in your own style and we will also scale down the button a bit so if I go under prefab there should be the shop item prefab somewhere and there it is shop button prefab the minimum width I'll be putting that on 70 and the minimum height on 70 as well now if we press play on this this is now what we get and I believe that we can actually change the padding a little bit. So back on my shop item container, position Y, I'll be putting it on minus 2.5, which is pretty much just uh, 5 divided by 2. And now this is what we get. It looks a little bit better, and it is pretty much all inside of that panel. Okay, now once we have good looking texture, I'm actually quite convinced that this is actually not going to look too shabby and can actually be great. Okay, let's go check on the level selection side. Now on this side, it's going to be a little bit more different because um, down here is going to be, you know, we have to cover this whole area, even the little bottom side. Now to assume, to have a mask that assumes this whole uh, screen, we could actually use the same exact texture. So. What I'll be doing is a little bit tricky. I will go ahead and just right click on my level selection, create a new image, and we will assign it as the um, this image, so the UI Atlas at the index is zero. Now, this is going to be my mask, so we're not going to be able to see it in the end, so I'll just go ahead and add the mask component to the show mask graphics, so that's how it's going to look. The same exact way, but this is going to be um, taking its alpha channel and then the alpha channel if it's on zero then it's not going to render the pixel. So we have to scale this up properly. I will just go ahead and just bump this up like that. Now notice that we have uh, we also have some drop shadow and the little drop shadow down here actually counts as a pixel so I have to be really careful about that. So like this would be correct for the vertical axis now that's fine here as well and we have to bump it up just a little bit on this side but not too much because you have to check uh, on this it's actually taking the shadow as well so just be careful about that maybe something of the sort let's try it out so to, to actually try it out I will change the image name for mask I will drag and drop these two inside of mask and then do the uh, show mask graphic Okay, if we hit play on this, have a look. It actually already makes sense, but maybe we need to gain a little bit on this side uh, and just scale it inward a bit. But we can just play around with these. Uh, it's only scaling, so it's fairly easy to do. And let's actually try it out once more. 
I am going to go inside of my scene, show the mask graphic. I have to remove um, these two guys as children. Oh, that's the wrong, wrong side. I have to remove these two guys as children. I have to take them out because if I was to scale, uh, if I was to scale my mask with these two inside, I would actually scale them as well, and that's not something we want. So let's keep going, scaling this on the x-axis a little bit inward, and pushing it on this side and also on the y-axis like so okay remove the mask graphic put them as a children and we should finally be good to go alright so this makes sense to me I'd rather have it cut over here um, I think it looks a little bit better but that's only for me of course you can do your own and we can also scale up uh, scale down I mean the button on both sides. I think they're a little bit too big. So up here, I'll be taking this button and scaling it down maybe in 25 in height and 40 in width. Then we can move it a little bit on the left. Same thing on this side, so 40, 25. Alright, so one last thing I'd like to do before we end the video is actually put our skybox in the other scene as well. So I'm going to go inside of one underscore training. And then in artwork, I have the skybox material somewhere. You can make a folder out of these and make multiple if you wish. So, um, I simply drag and drop this inside of my scene. Now if we go inside of the game scene, it looks way different than it used to. A skybox really does make a huge difference, so if you want to spend some good time, um, make it your own skybox, or you can go on a website, on uh, I mean the asset source, so hit control, F, control 9 on the keyboard, and you can look skybox up. That's usually what I do because I'm not really good at designing skies. There is some free skybox out there that are really good looking, so you sort them by price, and let's say, I took this one last time, it was really great, so the Fantasy Skybox free you import them inside of your game and uh, you actually get all those nice guys that you can use so you hit import and uh, you know what I'm actually going to use this skybox for my game but um, I wanted to go through the process of creating one with you just so you have a clue of you know how you do it then you go inside of the scene and you should now have somewhere your skybox now this guy, he put it in a uh, folder called Fantasy Skybox 3. Then you can simply go ahead, open up the material, drag and drop that in your scene. So it looks way better. You have daytime, you have nighttime, you pretty much have everything you want in this. So if I go inside of the main menu and I do the exact same thing. Now, of course, uh, I don't think it's going to fit for my game too much, but I mean it's there and it is pretty much just looking gorgeous so level selection level one and uh, we're pretty much just looking downward with the camera so it's going to be hard to see but you could adjust your camera angle and have a good look at the skybox while you're playing other than that guys that's going to be pretty much it for this episode so if you enjoyed this or if you learned something please just go ahead and leave me a like I really appreciate that if you have any comment or question or you'd like to share your art you can do that in the comment section below and also on the Facebook page that you can find in the description. Other than that, that's going to be pretty much it, so thanks a lot for watching, subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next episode.